Uh, it looks like we got a six month old shortness of breath. It says history of asthma. When we arrived, the fire department was there giving the baby oxygen. Y'all all right? How you doing, baby? How the baby doing? He's definitely having trouble breathing, so we have to get him into the truck quick to get a nebulizer on him. <laughs> we can give him something to breathe in. The nebulizer will help open his lungs and ultimately help him breathe better. Y'all got that new spot. This one on. Where the mama at? I want you to come sit right here, baby. All right, little one. Don't jump. Don't run off. Oh, I can hear him from here. You got a little yeah, jump up in there. junk. <laughs> It's gonna be all right, man. I know. Yeah, um, you think you wanna hold that? <laughs> so we're just assessing for any type of distress. Obviously, the kid's breathing really fast and is, is grunting and having trouble getting real. air in. I don't want you to chew on it. What's his name? I want you to breathe on it. John. Has he been diagnosed with that? Okay. This child is newly diagnosed with a case of asthma. You know what's funny, though? Like, once we start moving the ambulance, it put those kids right out. They're going to be sleeping all the way to the uh, We can go. I'm good. It's uh. so funny. I know. I know. Oh, so I see the lights outside again. That's what I see. See? We're not as mean as you thought, huh? I know. Cough it out. That's good. Doing better now. <laughs> Treating an infant, it can sometimes be nerve-wracking. The kid's sick and he needs medication, and you can be easily distracted with crying, but. You know, you want to stay focused and get the kid breathing better. Watching a child that was screaming a minute ago fall asleep because of the care you've given. You got me, little one. Is, is pretty awesome. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh. 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 He said that drive was so smooth, he fell asleep. asleep. Dude, they always fall asleep. You said that before we got before we left. Always. Like, that's, that, that's that little magic touch I got. <laughs> yes. Dude, that kid, dude, I can see my kid looking like that little plump type baby, man. I can just see that. You think that. that's because in your situation, the father is a plump kid as well? <laughs> What, what makes you think your kid's gonna look like that? I don't know. All the kids in the T-Row fan come out a little plump. Then our muscles start to uh, oh, start developing. That how You're right, right. See all this? How, you know how much you weighed when you were born? Probably like 17, 8. See, back in them days, man, mama had to walk up two hills, catch four buses to charity. It was back at work in that afternoon, huh? Hey, I'm talking about back at work that same afternoon, you know what I mean? And snow. They don't even snow in New Orleans. Just that day. It's just so having to snow that year and that day. Three, two, four, six, four. 50-year-old female, not alert, showing a brown. My dude, you really got your on my mask? You don't breathe off that part. So you want mine? I'm gonna bring you back to the zoo first thing this morning. All right, let's make some magic happen. We headed out to a female patient. They say having shortness of breath. She has a history of asthma. But then they also come back. The call was sent over to PD as well because patient is a mental patient. So, you know, that last note really added a different dynamic to this call, yo. Is it even asthma? You know, what if it's like, more of a mental breakdown type of thing. We got to get down to the bottom of it, like always, you know? Go on there. Be prepared for anything. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Oh, what the? Boy, what shenanigans we going into? Oh! Lord Jesus. 3246, we in the area. 
we're responding to a female patient that's having some shortness of breath and that's having a mental crisis, a mental breakdown. We immediately notice there's a lot of police officers that's here with this patient. What's up, y'all? Really no Is she actually like short of breath? Um, not that we know of, no. Sorry. Gotcha. What's up, my man? Yeah, I just put him back in my coat. Just kept her from leaving. I mean, she's not combative. Right, yeah, no, let's check her out real quick. Mm. What's bothering you, my love? I feel like I'm losing my mind. All right, I'm the paramedics. My partner here, too. We're going to take care of you, OK? Mm hmm Almost like a panic attack, huh, baby? I haven't had my medicine. Your medicine in a while? About seven or eight months. My doctor wouldn't return my call. As I'm making contact with this patient, I noticed that she's very anxious, and that's probably what's causing the patient shortness of breath. All right. We got you, bro. Ooh. We need to get her in the back of the truck in our setting. That way, we can better take care of her. Hey, it's Jack. I'm on scene with a 57-year-old 50 female. Um, I'm calling for orders for just 2.5 of her said IV to help relax her coma down. In this situation, I call for orders for Versat. We give it to those patients who are really agitated and combative or in a full excited delirium state. Yeah, I'm going to start a quick IV on you, OK, baby? All right. All right, just try and keep real still, OK? Yeah, that stick go, OK? One, two, three. Right, we got you, OK, baby? We're going to take care of you, all right? You feel like you're feeling a little better, baby? Not yet. Well, I'm coming around to these. It's gonna be all right, okay? <laughs> Did you want to harm yourself or anyone else? I thought about it. You thought about it, okay. Did you have a plan on how you wanted to do it? No. No, okay. She's blood. If you see blood, it would help you feel better. That's what it felt like. Okay. Where is the home? It's okay. Let me out. I want to go home. It's okay. Please let me go home. It's okay, baby. She's very anxious and she just rambling off things that's not really making sense. She needs that additional dose of Versed. That way we can keep her calm and get her to the hospital safely. It's okay, blood. Just relax on me. Just relax on me, okay, baby? Listen to me. Just relax, OK, baby? It's all right. I'm to be taking care of you, OK, baby? All right? Oh, it's OK. It is OK, all right? You are absolutely OK. I promise you, you are OK, all right? Once we make it to the hospital with this patient, they're definitely going to keep a close eye on her. Then hopefully, she can get the help she needs, not just right now, but once she's also permanently discharged. How you feeling right now, baby? Oh. You feeling OK right now? Oh. It's all right, all right? You're going to be OK, all right? We got you. Chest pain, 34-year-old male. Has a defibrillator in CHF. What? 34 years old? Oh, my god, dude. Damn, he's CHF yummy. cocaine usage. You think? Probably. I would think so. He is at the treatment facility. How you doing, boss? What's going on? I was in the shower. I felt a sharp jolt in my chest started hurting. We'll just get you right on the stretch over here, boss. <laughs> this guy was clearly in a lot of pain. Our biggest concern for him at this point in time is to get him to the hospital so they can determine whether or not it's his heart or his internal defibrillator malfunctioning. So, Anthony, what other kind of medical problems do you have, buddy? I had kidney failure. I got kidney apnea. And this is not a healthy individual, and he could have things going on chemically that will also affect their heart rhythm. A little oxygen up your nose, OK? So you have to look for underlying issues that may be attributing to the pain that he's having in his chest. Anthony, you ever had any surgery besides the defibrillator? I had a heart cat. That counts. Now, did the pain start with your pacemaker was and then shoot down? Yes. OK. You've taken nitroglycerin before, yes? No. Typically, when we respond to someone that's having chest pains, we give them aspirin and nitroglycerin. What's this pressure? We're not going to give that to you right now. 
the pressure's a little low. Administering nitro when his blood pressure's too low could make it fall further, causing him to pass out. All right, let's go. So all we can do for him at this point is treat him with fluids to help raise his blood pressure and continue to monitor him on the way to the hospital. You want more pain? Well, let us know if your chest starts hurting more. You smoke? Yes. Any street drugs at all? Not anymore. How long did you stop? Six months. Six months? What did you used to take? Uh, meth. That's why my heart is so bad. So how long have you been in here? Three months. How long did you use meth before? Uh, two years. A long time, killer. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Oh. What made you want to come in here and get the treatment? My kids. Good for you, my man. Good for you. Was it pretty hard initially? Yeah. After 13 years? Well, at first it was, but... They didn't put you on anything else? No methadone, anything like that? Man, I'm proud of you. Good for you. Why trade one addiction for another? Exactly, buddy. Hey, mad props to you, Anthony. Good for you, man. That's, that's a good life story. I'm proud of you. Thirteen years of meth use, and because of his two-year-old and his four-year-old, he decided, I'm not going to use meth anymore ever again. Right. I mean, he probably just got to a point where he's like, you know, I want to see my kids grow up. Yeah. That's being serious about not wanting to be high anymore. I am legitimately impressed with that guy. Spine carry threes. Male short of breath. Negative for flu symptoms. So we're going to a 54-year-old male that's complaining of shortness of breath and difficulty speaking between breaths. That's pretty much all the information that we got. Hi. You short of breath? Your inhaler wasn't working. You ran out. OK, my baby, you think you can take a couple steps right down the stairs? He says he's having an asthma attack, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get him in the back of the truck, and we're going to start him on a breathing treatment. So I need to pull you. As me and Jeanette are getting our patient into the back of the unit, we kind of see this guy that's making his way pretty much into the scene. And we don't know who this guy is, so at this moment, we're just going to kind of dismiss him. We don't know what he wants. We don't know what he needs. Right now, we have other things to worry about. I'm about to try to kill. Don't, uh, 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 uh. Don't, don't hop up in here. Please, please, please help. Me and Jeanette, we got a call for a male patient with shortness of breath. And I see this guy like persistently just kind of lingering around like the scene. And that just makes me feel uneasy because I don't know what he's trying to do there. I got a wanderer requesting please saying he did a lot of drugs and somebody's trying to kill him. Can you just create me another item? All right, come on. All right. Yep. Either he has some kind of psych issue or somebody's really trying to kill him. It's one of the two. You want to go to the hospital? What you want? I want to go to the hospital. All right. Stay right there. All right. I mean, you know that dude that's out there? He's always around here. Yeah. Just give me. Sit right there. Sit right there. Sit right there and stay. I tell him to sit in the captain's chair, and I'm like, just don't move, don't mess with nothing, don't touch nothing, just stay right there. You was just in the hospital? Yeah. For what, the same thing? Yeah. Well, why you keep doing drugs, my man? You got to try to find help so you can get off of them. Because ain't nobody out here trying to kill you. That's all in your head. But we're trying to get everything done with our respiratory patient. We're trying to get vital signs on our second patient. We want to make sure that it's a safe situation and we have a safe transport. Since this dude came up and started requesting our help and stuff, we got to take him too with us. But I'm going to try and make sure no, he don't bother you, OK? Well, you all right, my baby. Thank you for being cool with that. I know. <laughs> right. You want to switch, take his CBG. I'm going to get an IV on him. Steroid's gonna get you feeling right too, okay? Is anybody coming? Nobody's coming. We're gonna bring you to the hospital. We came for one patient and we left with two. 
<laughs> Only in New Orleans does something like this happen. Only in New Orleans does someone just try to hitch a ride to the hospital. God, you gotta love it. You gotta love it here. <laughs> you never know, man. <laughs> the city throws you them curveballs, bro. Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. <sighs> Grand the knife. Grand the knife. No, they're not dead. I can work with that.